to the next iteration of Pulp and Deckle. Uh, this is our second demonstration video that we are making for you and today we're going to be featuring watermarks. Um, we've got some very exciting different techniques that we're going to show and let me explain a little bit about each of them. So to give you an idea of what a watermark is. I've got uh, this paper that, as you see, laying down. You don't see very much what the, the watermark is. But then, if you hold it up to the light, the image becomes visible. Like magic, right? Uh, so, watermarks are something that uh, you can make in different ways. This is a window screen, and these um, leaf images that you see here. Let me put this white behind here so you can see it a little better. Um, that's made with some foam from the, you know, just a regular craft store. Sticky back foam. So I cut out these leaves. These are kozo leaves, um, which is a plant that can be used for paper making that's been used for um, thousands of years in China and Japan and other Eastern countries. So I really love these leaves. They're very special to a lot of paper makers. And then on the other side here, we've got uh, this green paint. So this is fabric paint, also can be bought at the craft or art supply store. And it is kind of a water motif that I've got there. And then this is applied to window screen. So this is just a soft mesh window screen. Um, we'll see this in action later, but this is gonna be our first watermark that we make. And then I'll grab this for us. Um, this is a watermark that I made last spring using a uh, Gorilla Tape. So if you've been to the hardware store, you may have seen this. Uh, it's water resistant and holds up really well um, over time. So it, this is tape on that window screen again. Um, and then another version of the same kind of thing here. This is in a decal box from Arnold Grummer. So we're going to be making watermarks with decal box, with molds and decals. Um, so you'll see different techniques, but we're trying to keep it really simple with this demo, um, not making really complicated historic watermarks with wire and um, other kinds of materials, light and shade watermarks. Uh, they get really complicated and they look beautiful and cool, but we want to keep it easy for you guys at home. So these are the three, and then, oh, there'll be a mystery watermark at the end. Um, that we're going to show you. So the mystery watermark will obviously be a mystery that, that we'll share you with you later. Uh, and then uh, one other thing that I'm going to talk to you about is the importance of water in this process. Obviously paper making is a process that you need water and fiber to make it happen. Um, so our studio has moved to Oregon City, Oregon, and this is a beautiful image of the Willamette River uh, and some old paper mills, uh, industrial paper mills that are just a stone's throw from our house. Willamette Falls, a very important site for the indigenous community uh, now and time immemorial. And the water quality that went into the paper of these mills and that will go into the paper that we're using today. It's, it's really important. So the health of our rivers, that's something that we think about. Uh, this is an image of the Clackamas River that's also very close to where we live now. It's really beautiful, all, all different kinds of fir trees. Uh, we love to visit there. And we also have an image of the Willamette again. This is at the Kanima Bluffs. This is a path that we walk along frequently and enjoy the beautiful sunsets there. Uh, just staying connected to place and to that importance of water in our community. 
Uh, so that's something that I like to just kind of ground us with. It's not just this demo and the techniques, but also the materials and how we use them and where they come from. Um, so one other quick thing about the demo that we're going to do today. Um, in this little bucket here, I've got um, some white cotton pulp. And that's what you see in this vat as well. Uh, so we're going to be making the first few watermarks for you with this material. This is a material that's the offcuts from uh, fabric production. And then we have beaten it in our Hollander beater uh, for about uh, two hours. And now we're going to use it just with water. And also, um, I've got this um, sizing that we're going to use that's actually already in this vat. So the sizing helps the paper be a little bit more water resistant. It'll have a little bit more of a rattle also. So just the sizing in there gives it some uh, strength. So that's what we're going to do. Watermark fun today. Um, we can't get wait. We can't wait to get started with this demo and uh, sharing the process with you. All right, so we're going to start with uh, the Kozo and water images. And this screen is going to go right on top of our mold. So this is the mold here. And I want to just make sure it's nice and smooth. And then the decal slots on right on top of that. Um, I'm going to move it around just a little bit more. Try and get that water image not to go off the side so much. There we go. That looks better. Okay, so uh, first thing I gotta do is we've got the pulp in here already. So we're gonna hog the vat and mix up those fibers really well. And then that looks good. We're going to dip it in and then lift and then give it a little shake very gently to disperse those fibers. And you should start to see, if you get, we'll show up in the camera there, um, how you can see the watermark is what it's doing is making the pulp thinner in the areas where the image is present. So that's what lets the light pass through once the paper is dry. Let the water drain. This last corner is just draining a little slower. And then we're gonna carefully tilt to the corners here and drain the water a little bit more. If the paper is too moist, when we go to get it off of this mold, it's going to want to slide around and uh, not be a solid piece of paper. So we want to just make sure we give it a little time to drain. All right, that looks good. So now I'm going to take the decal off very gently and leave it in the vat. And then I'm going to bring this over. I've got this area set up where this is a, a fabric interfacing called Pellon. And then there's a felt underneath that. It's a wool felt. And then this plastic board. You could use a wooden board uh, or a towel and a sheet. We're going to be doing that later. Um, not using the Pellon, but the Pellon's a good size for the paper that I'm making. Um, so we're going to go ahead and cooch this, C-O-U-C-H, and that means to lay it down on the Pellon. So I'm holding this um, screen that the watermark's on, 
so that it doesn't fall off as a cooch. And then I'm gonna press really well all over the back here. And I'm gonna press even harder than I might just a regular sheet of paper because I really want good contact with uh, the image that we're trying to get to appear, the watermark. All right, I'm gonna lift this up and I'm gonna start to carefully peel this up. And it's faint, it's a little hard to see before it dries. Um, and I've got some wrinkles that I can see in the middle of the paper. So I'm just gonna sponge, get a little more water out. All right. So you get a much more distinct image um, from using this thick foam that you can see with the leaves versus the water is much more subtle. So different techniques will get you different results. Uh, so what we wanna do now is switch over to our next um, watermarks that we're gonna make with the, the different images that you saw. And we're gonna use recycled paper to do that. So I need to move this stuff away and through the magic of video, we will be right back. Okay, so let's move on to using some recycled pulp that we're gonna make on a blender. Um, the materials that we're gonna use are this off cuts from some egg press cards. Uh, these are things that they give to us uh, to recycle. And some same deal from a printmaker um, that had just these remnants of paper. So nice high quality paper that we're using. Uh, what you put in is what you're gonna get out for recycled paper. And then uh, just to, you know, jazz it up a little bit. I had this packing material that came in this envelope um, and it is, you know, colorful and fun. Just some little bits of paper that we're gonna add in to our mix of pulp, which is, ta-da, surprise, I already tore it up for us. Uh, I tore it up and put it in some water so it could be soaking and get a little more hydrated before we put it in the blender. So that's the next step. You tear it up into small pieces that the blender can handle and let it soak in some water. You can even do that a few hours in advance or overnight. And then you take out your blender. So this blender um, is a Ninja. So this blade comes out entirely. Um, just make sure the blade is in there uh, before you start to blend. And then I'm gonna put in like a generous handful of material into the blender and then add water. I'll add just a little bit more. You, you kind of have to play with your ratios a little bit to see what's going to work for your blender. Then I've got some water. That It's always better to put less material in if you're unsure than too much because you don't want to break your blender. This is from the thrift shop. It's nothing special. Um, you know, you can use any kind of blender to do this process. So uh, the handle is going to go down, it's going to make a loud noise, and we're going to blend for about 60 seconds. That was a little less than 60, but I could see that it was getting pretty blended and I could go ahead and stop it. Uh, it feels like oatmeal. 
it's real soft and clumpy. And I'm just gonna pour this slurry of pulp straight into the water. The only other thing in this water is some of that other cotton pulp that I used for the first demo. Um, just to start with a little more material so we wouldn't have to blend quite so much. And it looks a little bit thin, so let's go ahead and do one more blender. And just to remind you of the process too, make sure that your blade is in there if it's a removable blade. Take a big handful of material, which I can go ahead, there's not that much left in here. Use this water and what material is in it. And then blend. I'm not going to blend quite so long so that we get a little more chunkiness, um, visual chunkiness in the pulp. Let's see how that looks. Oh yeah. It's like kind of more confetti-like. You'll see when I pour it in what the slurry, the difference there. So if you blend for less time, you're gonna get bigger chunks of paper in there. If you blend for a little longer, you'll get a more smooth looking fiber. So that looks when I hog it like it's gonna be enough material for us to pull a sheet of paper. So let me unplug the blender here. And then I'll move on over and tell you a little bit about uh, the mold and decal that we're gonna use. So this is from Arnold Grummer. You can look them up online and uh, it's a frame, a screen, and then this backing um, piece here. So you have to hold these together when you dip in um, to capture the pulp on the screen. So we don't need this screen right now because we have a screen that has our watermark images. So we're just going to swap those out like so and line it up and then I will move this out of the way and remember I told you before that you could use sheet material. So this is just cut up bed sheets. So we can put this down and even put two down so we can make two papers right next to each other. Um, so this is what I'm going to cooch onto instead of that Pellon material that I used before. And you want to make sure it's smooth so that when you put your paper down it doesn't bunch up. Um, the images that I'm using here are uh, inspired by the natural world. Uh, we've got a salmon and then a robin, or no, sorry, that tail uh, means it's swift. <laughs> I've just been seeing so many robins in our yard that I have robin on the brain. Uh, and then a brush rabbit and the stars at night. So when I made this last year at the beginning of the pandemic, was really thinking about, oh, we're at home and you know, who am I connecting with? Um, and what wildlife do I want to give thanks to? So that's where the story of these came from. Uh, and now I'm gonna go ahead and use the vat and pull a sheet of paper. So first I've got to always hog. And you see I set this up in a slightly different way. You can pull your mold and decal through however it makes sense for you in your space. And I'm gonna dip this in all the way down, lift it up and give it a nice shake. So I don't wanna shake too hard or I'll end up with an uneven sheet of paper. And you can see the lines are starting to form for where the water, watermark images are. Let this drain a little bit more. And if you see any areas that where the line of your watermark are 
maybe a little thicker and where the pulp has pulled away too much, you can move the, the fibers around very gently um, just to make sure that you have full coverage over those areas. All right, that looks good. We'll take the deckle off, drain it a little bit more. Yep. And now we're ready to cooch. So, like I said, I want this to be nice and flat, this surface. And I'm going to line it up with the edge of my paper and then slowly lower it down and then press. And then I can move, remove this backing piece. And I like to use a sponge just to soak up a little more of this water on the back. People have different techniques, but this is mine. Uh, and then you can wring out that sponge back in the water. Give it another pass. You can see where there's one wrinkle in there I'm working out. That should be good. So we can start to lift up. If it pulls up, the paper pulls up on the screen one direction, try a different one. Uh, we'll try well, every, every direction. The paper is thin. So I could probably use a little more pulp to get it to release a little bit easier. Uh, but you can tap on the edges there if it's still giving you trouble. And then also uh, get it to release with your finger. Once it starts to release, it should come up pretty easily. Yeah. So now we've got our wildlife themed, nature themed paper here. Uh, we're going to set up the decal box, the Arnold Grummer decal box, to give you a different idea of like, if you don't have as much water to use and you need something a little bit um, more contained to make a single sheet of paper with, the decal box is your way to go. So I'm going to move this fat. We'll be right back. All right, so now we're going to move on to the decal box. Um, I've got some water in this bucket to use for this process. And then over here, I've got the decal box. So we're going to go ahead and show you how that is done. So this is an Arnold Grummer decal box. Um, it's good for making one piece of paper at a time. And I, you can see I've went ahead and put the watermark screen in there. And then this is uh, watermarks that Gary made last year at the same time that I made those nature watermarks. Um, thinking about abstraction and personal symbols uh, to create these. I think that's probably right, Gary. <laughs> and, um, we're going to put that in the bottom of this container and then pour some water in and then pour our pulp in and move it around um, to distribute it all over the frame, uh, the surface of the frame there. So first thing you do is water. We want just enough to cover the bottom of the mold there. A little bit more and then we are going to add in our pulp so this is the same white cotton that I was using it for the first demo and I'm gonna kind of disperse this in the water and I could have done this in the water that I just poured in here too in advance you could do it either way so you don't have to have it, you know, dr more dried out like this before you add it in. You can add it to the water and then pour it in so that it's nice and mixed up. Um, I can see that I'm not going to have enough 
water in the bottom of this. So I'm gonna grab some from our recycled vat and just pour a little bit more in. That looks better. So that having more water lets me move the fibers around a little bit more um, without them settling on the surface too quickly. So if you don't have a lot of water to use, like I said, this is a good tool, the deco box. And you can make one piece of paper at a time. Uh, it's great for demonstrations and for workshops, classrooms, uh, and you can get these at Arnold Brummer too. There's other kinds of deco boxes that you can find online, but this is probably the easiest for beginners to start with. All right, so what I'm looking for here and what I keep messing around with the fibers is to make sure that there aren't any little holes. So I can move the whole thing around to distribute those fibers a little bit better too. I'm gonna add just a little bit more. And I don't want those clumping up too much. All right, so I can see that the water is draining out. I want to add a little bit more again so that I have time to move these fibers around. I'm going to pick this up in a second and let it drain like this. And I just wanted to make sure that I had enough material that when I did that, uh, it wasn't going to drain too fast. So I can see one place where the image, the watermark image is a little thick and needs some adjustment. So like I did before, I'll move the fiber over it, back over it very gently and let it drain. And then with this, you undo the Velcro tabs you take the dot, top piece off like a book it's gonna open up and then what do we do we drain we drain we drain drip 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 and now we are ready to cooch okay so that looks pretty smooth and I will slowly lower this down, holding on to the screen so that it doesn't just flop down. It's a little tricky. There we go. And then press, move the screen away, grab my sponge here, mop up some of this water. This pressing action is also helping to knit the fibers together a little bit more to make a stronger piece of paper. So I'm pressing up and down. I'm not wiping back and forth just to mop up the water. All right, let's see if we can get it to release. Oh yeah, very nice. There we are. So the final thing that I want to show you, uh, the mystery watermark that we're going to make, uh, we can make right on top of, well, not right on top of, I am covering up the other pieces of paper um, with some other pieces of the cl cloth that I cut, the bed, bed sheet cloth, smoothing that out. If you don't smooth it out, you're gonna get wrinkles in your paper because they're gonna just transfer right into the surface. All right, so this last uh, mystery process that we're gonna do, uh, we'll use the deckle box again. So you can see me put it back together. Um, this, this time 
we're not using any of the watermarks because we're making a watermark. So I need that screen that this comes with. And then this goes on the back. And then you want to make sure this is nice and tight. Velcroed back on here. Okay. And then submerge back into the water. And I'm pressing this down because there's a big air bubble. We want to move that out of the screen. Make it as flat as possible. All right, now it's ready uh, for us to put in more pulp. So I can add in more like this as I was doing before and really just breaking it up as I add it in. Can see those big clumps. Gotta get out the clumps. All right, I think we're good. We're gonna lift and shake, and then it's kind of slowly draining because this other screen is much more fine than the one we had the watermarks on. So if it's really slowly draining like this, you may need to just set it on the side and let it slowly drain. So you may be wondering about right now, where's the watermark in this paper? <laughs> I don't see any way that you've blocked this out. Uh, we'll get to it. It's, it's gonna be, a, like I said, a magic secret watermark. Um, while this is draining, I'm just going to tell you a little bit more about uh, what what purpose watermarks have served. Um, so, you know, there's some history in the medieval times. You can look up some really cool watermarks being made in Europe. Um, wire watermarks and light and shade watermarks. The wire watermarks in particular uh, really stood for the maker of the paper. So they were individual kind of little characters, um, very simple and in their line, or they were the, uh, ma the sign of the mill where they were made. So that's kind of where they started out. And in many ways, that's still how they are used in contemporary um, manufactured paper. You can find some um, really nice art papers that will still have a watermark when you hold them up to the light um, and there's a sign of who who made them and what mill they come from. Um, all of the watermarks that we're making today are really more for artistic purposes. Um, so they fall outside of that tradition but people are doing all kinds of amazing um, 3D printing and using Krika machines and um, I love the watermarks that Helen Hebert makes. You can find some of her YouTube videos on our channel playlist as well. Um, she makes really intricate and beautiful watermarks. So you can find how artists are using these techniques and embracing them and making them something new than just a maker's mark. Um, so still so slowly draining. So. <laughs> It's good for you to see how different tools will have different um, possibilities. But what I want to do here, and I think I could start doing now, is to add a watermarks through splashing. Oh, there's still too much water in here. But if you start to splash the surface of the paper, then you are making what's called paper maker's tears. And paper maker's tears are usually something people don't want to see in a piece of paper. It's been, maybe you're being too quick with your paper and you end up splashing it and getting these little droplets. But they can also be used to make these beautiful um, watermarks and craters as you see the paper dry. So 
uh, we will go ahead and let this sit and rest and I don't know how long it's gonna take to drain so we'll be back with you um, once it's drained because no one wants to wash paper drain it's like washing paint dry mm -hmm. All right, so now it's drained enough that we can make some paper maker's tears. So I've got water in here, and I'm just gonna dribble on the surface. And that is thinning out places in the paper and making these little craters. And those are called paper maker's tears. Uh, it also sometimes is if you really slap the water on there, like you can see some places it removed the pulp entirely. That's fine, it makes it kind of lace-like. Interesting. So it's difficult to see because of the color of this paper being so light, but we'll go ahead and cooch it and hopefully it'll show up a little bit more as we do that. So I line this up with the edge here. Slowly lower it down, press, and then sponge. Bring out sponge. Let's see what happened with this magical paper making tear paper. Oh yeah, we've got some nice craters in there. Uh, let's see if I can Hold this up where you can see them a little bit better. So you can see those are the thinner areas in the paper. Now put this back down, cover it right up, and then that's it for making the paper. Now we have to get it dry. So we're going to keep it real simple. We have a press that we use normally. Uh, for making paper, but we know not everyone at home has one of those So what I'm gonna do is just cover this up with actually some more cloths So I soak up more of this water So I'll smooth those out Same thing other side Smooth those out and now, I will cover that up with another board. It can be a wooden board that's been treated so the water doesn't soak into it. Just sealed um, with some varnish, some waterproof seal it. And then I've done this where I will stand on uh, the board also with my body weight. But if you can't do that, that's okay. You can just press on it. And it does help. So the final step is that we could take our paper that's under here. We got to figure out where it went. There it is. So we could take this and you can iron it dry, which is what I am going to do with this piece um, for that process. You need to put the paper on the cloth on a surface where it can get hot from the iron. So, you know, just a wood board would probably be one of your better uh, options for this. And then you want to sandwich it in between a dry cloth and the paper and then another cloth. And then from here, I've already got an iron. So here's our iron. It's already on. You can just carefully, I'm not pressing down as I do this because I don't want to dig into the paper. I'm just letting it gently glide over the surface. Now, this is a totally acceptable way to get your paper dry, you know, it requires some patience and time. 
Um, so if those are things you have in short supply, I would recommend just hanging up your paper and uh, letting it dry naturally um, over time. So that may take a day, may take longer, depending on how thick your paper is, where you're drying it, what the weather's like. See, that's where it dug in a little bit just now, um, where I wasn't being careful. I was talking and not paying attention. So I'm gonna swap out for a drier cloth just to speed up this process a little bit for us. And then to, to even get it to be even a little bit faster, at this point I should be able to peel the paper off its original cloth, which is pretty saturated with water. Watermarks are starting to be visible, that's nice. And replace with a dry cloth. So we're we're not going to dry all the paper um, with an iron today because um, we want you to see what this process is, but not have to, you know, fast forward through to the results. So we'll make a separate video after this showing you. The other papers dried. Um, we'll hang those up and then share those with you uh, at a later time. But for now, this does look like it's starting to get a lot more dry. Oh yeah. Um, so the watermark is starting to be much more visible. Um, we'll show you over here. There you are. So even as it's wet, you can still see it starting to show up here. Um, rather than keep ironing, uh, well, I am gonna keep ironing, <laughs> but I'm gonna do it by myself. I'm gonna uh, say goodbye for now, and we so appreciate um, your interest and support and this endeavor, and we hope that you learned something new and if you'd like to share this with others, please do. There's also a donation page on our website, which I'll put in the, um, the you know, show demo information uh, description. So you could go to that if you are, have enjoyed this and got something out of it and give us a donation to keep doing these projects and these demos. So thank you. Uh, we will see you next time. Bye.